The funeral of murder victim Sean Cox took place yesterday. The 42-year-old was shot by two masked gunmen at the Donegal Celtic Sports and Social Club on the Suffolk Road in West Belfast on the 2nd of October. Police said the attack was carried out in front of over 100 people and it took just 21 seconds for Sean Fox to lose his life. The 42-year-old was killed in what police have described as a calculated, planned and ruthless execution. The two gunmen entered the Donegal Celtic Sports and Social Club at around 2.25pm on Sunday. They had their hoods up and face covered. Those who take human life commit a heinous offence against the living God. They break God's fifth commandment, Thou shalt not kill, said Father Paddy McCafferty during the Mass, which was followed by the cremation of Mr Fox's remains in Roselawn Crematorium. He also went on to say those who ordered, planned and carried out this ruthless crime, their fate, if they persist in their sin and wickedness, is the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. He said, I must say to those who perpetrated this diabolical atrocity, flee from the wrath that is to come. For if you are not to repent, you most certainly will face the wrath of Almighty God in eternity when you, in your turn, leave this world. The shooting of Sean Fox is just one of a number of shootings that have occurred in Belfast over the last few years. So I'm just going to go through a few of them now. First of those that we're going to go through was a 26-year-old Kieran McManus who was shot outside Domino's Pizza on Kennedy Way on the 30th of March 2013. He was shot twice in the back as he stood by his car. His murder has been linked to a long-running feud which started in 2010 and culminated in the murder of South Belfast man Stephen Carson. That killing had been connected to a samurai sword attack on West Belfast man Michael Smith who was convicted of Mr Carson's murder back in 2018. Mr McManus was allegedly involved in the sword attack on Smith who has never been charged with any offences connected to the McManus killing. Then, on the 9th of October 2013, a 46-year-old Kevin Kearney was found shot dead in Alexandra Park off the entering road in North Belfast. It was reported at the time that Kearney was known to the police and it was alleged that he had been dealing drugs. Then after that, Tommy Crossan, who was 43 years old, he was gunned down at a fuel depot off the Springfield Road on 18th of April 2014. This fatal shooting happened near the Peter Pan Centre Industrial Estate just before 5pm on Good Friday. Initial reports at the time suggested that he'd been approached while walking to his car and bundled into a yard before being shot. However, at a press conference, police said that they believed that the gunman fired through the window of a hut which was being used as an office. At the time, the lead of the murder investigation, Detective Jonathan Roberts said Mr Crossan had been shot a number of times at close range in his upper body area as he sat in the office of the business of a family friend within the Pizza Pan Industrial Complex. He said the murder of Mr Crossan on the Springfield Road was brutal and a ruthless attack which has no place in society. He said Mr Crossan was known to the police but no matter what his lifestyle was, absolutely nothing justified action against him. Leading on from that, a 28-year-old Edward Gibson, he was fatally wounded in a shooting in an alleyway beside Divis Tower on 24th of October 2014 and he died in hospital shortly afterwards. Just a little backstory, Edward Gibson wasn't even born when his father, Edward Taggart, was shot dead in a paramilitary trial punishment assault near his home in West Belfast on November the 30th, 1985. In a tragic twist, the same fate lay in store for the son he never met. As I said, he was blasted in the thigh and stomach in an alley between Divis Street and Clonford and Crescent in West Belfast. The 28-year-old died from his injuries at Belfast Royal Victoria Hospital and it was the second time Mr Gibson was injured in a shooting. He was the victim of a paramilitary attack back in January 2004. However, in contrast to his father's murder, police ruled out the involvement of dissidents in his shooting. Sources said the father of one was a member of the notorious Divis Hood Gang that wrecked havoc in West Belfast and their cold-blooded killing was a result of a bitter private feud. Fast forward, 6th of January 2016, 31-year-old Connor McKee was killed at his parents' home in Glen Park Street in the Old Park. At the time of his killing, the media reported that reliable sources indicated the new IRA were behind the attack. 
on April the 15th that year, there was another shooting at 33-year-old Michael McGibbon in an alleyway off Butler Place in Arroin. He died shortly afterwards in the Royal Victoria Hospital and his inquest found that he was shot during a so-called paramilitary-style shooting. Michael McGibbon was shot twice in the leg in an alleyway close to his home and the 33-year-old father of four had been ordered to attend the area because there were claims that he acted inappropriately with passengers in his taxi. There was an inquest earlier this year and the coroner Maria Duggan said the shooting in North Belfast on Michael McGibbon was intended to be a paramilitary punishment shooting but one of the bullets had severed an artery in Mr McGibbon's left leg causing his death in hospital around five hours after the attack. The coroner also said the fatal incident unfolded a day after two men who were masked up called at the family's home and demanded to speak to Mr McGibbon. Then there was a 55-year-old delivery driver, Dan Murray, and he was killed on the 9th of May 2016 after he'd been lured to Lady Street. The year previously, dissident group Action Against Drugs had shot him in the face at his home but he survived. So his fatal shooting happened in the Divvies area. It was reported by local people that the man was hit in the neck by his assailant. He was rushed to hospital in a critical condition but did not survive despite efforts to save him. He was targeted while sitting in a dark coloured Ford Focus car in Lady Street after possibly being lured to the area by a bogus fast food delivery order. Mr Murray was previously targeted in a gun attack almost exactly a year to the day he was shot dead. He was shot in the face but in 2015 near his North Belfast home. Mr Murray said at the time he had been accused of being a drug dealer which he denied and he would have to flee his home. As he recovered from that shooting he said the attack was an attempt to execute him. He said it was one face shot, one head shot, they didn't aim for anywhere else. I have no idea why there was no warning. I've been given a second chance and I want to find out why. They're accusing me of drug dealing and I want them to prove it. They branded me a drug dealer and I'm not. They had a 9 mil gun. It was an execution attempt that came straight in and bang. They didn't hesitate. They didn't give me any warnings. I turned round and the bullet went into my face. It hit my jaw, hit my bone and went right down into my shoulder. I staggered when they shot me. I thought they had shot me in the throat at first. And then I felt most of the pain in my shoulder. There was a lot of blood. Mr Murray then discharged himself from the hospital after surgery saying he was going to contact the various groups to ask why he was being targeted and I said a year later he was shot dead. There was another man, Joe Riley, who was 43 years old, who was shot a number of times in his chest at his home in Glenwood Court the 20th of October 2016. He was shot a number of times in his chest and it's believed that two other people in the house at the time were told to lie on the kitchen floor while the shooting took place. There was Raymond Johnston who was 28 he was shot and killed at his home on Glenbourne Avenue back in 2018. Two men were seen leaving from the scene. Said Chief Inspector at the time, Jeff Boyce, of the Serious Crime Branch, said Raymond Johnson was just 28 years old when he was killed inside his home in front of his well, Raymond partner. Johnson he was shot dead inside his home in West Belfast in front of his partner and her 11-year-old daughter. Today we're making public for the first time CCTV footage captured near Raymond's Glenbourne Avenue home in the moments leading up to and immediately after his murder, a time frame of less than 10 seconds. As we can see, these two men enter the home, one of whom is clearly carrying a firearm. While in the living room, they shoot Raymond Johnson in the chest, killing him. They then flee. Less than 10 seconds cost Raymond Johnson his life. Raymond's family, his partner and her daughter, have been left devastated. Not only did they lose Raymond in the most brutal fashion, but his partner and her daughter will live with the horrific images of having witnessed his murder for the rest of their lives. Today we are also prepared to publicly state that we believe Arm the Publicta, who claimed to be a distant Republican terrorist group, were involved in Raymond's murder. They used this claim to further their agenda of community intimidation and a pursuit of criminal endeavours. They deliberated, planned and carried out the murder of Raymond Johnson, coldly and clinically. We need to identify the perpetrators and remove them from the community in order to prevent further murders. Then there was Jim, J.D. Donegan, who was a pal of Sean Fox and he was killed on the 4th of December 2018 after he sat in his car outside St. Mary's Grammar School on the Glen Road. The gunman made his way on foot into a local housing estate.
Good evening. Police are tonight investigating the disgraceful murder of a man who was shot dead on the Glen Road at around 3.15 this afternoon. This man is believed to be aged in his 40s and he was sitting in his car when he was approached by a lone gunman who shot him several times, including at least once in the head. This is an absolutely disgraceful and reckless act for which there can be no justification whatsoever. The act was carried out in the immediate vicinity of three schools, where there were a large number of school pupils at the time. And it is entirely possible that we could have had a seriously injured or dead child or children as a result of this terrible act. There's clearly going to be an impact on children in this area as a result of this incident. There's, uh, children come to school to expect to be educated, not to leave school and see an incident of this nature. I would imagine that children will be traumatised by this incident. There's no excuse for it whatsoever. It will also have an impact on the teachers in the schools and the wider school community. The community of West Belfast do not deserve this. They do not deserve for these type of actions to be carried out outside schools and it will not deter the police from providing a service to these communities that they expect. I have three appeal points that I want to make. The victim was sitting in a red Porsche, the registration for which is JDZ34. And I would ask for anyone who saw this car in and around the Glen Road area this afternoon to come forward to police or who saw anybody acting suspiciously around this car to come forward. Police can be contacted on the 101 number. Secondly, it is believed that this male was wearing a high-vis jacket with the word security on the back of it and he left on foot. The gunman is also believed to be aged in his 40s. And thirdly, I would appeal for anyone who may have any video footage or dash cam footage to save that footage and to contact police again on the 101 number. Thank you. Who do you think? Then, Robbie Lawler, he was shot dead on the 4th of April 2020 outside a house on Etna Drive. It had been suggested that he travelled over the border in the hours before his death, possibly to collect the debt. He was well known to the guards for being involved in serious and organised crime. He was a suspect in the murders of Kenneth Finn and David Lynch amongst other crimes. He had over 100 convictions and had been released from prison back in December 2019. He had been warned by guards that his life was in danger before he went to Belfast. Back in 2019 he was mugged after leaving a gym which was filmed by his assailants. The assailants stole his gym bag and flip flops and posted photos of them wearing it. The assault was allegedly at the behest of the criminal foe of Lawler. The presence of flip flops in the bag of Keen Mulready Woods remains dumped in Kulak was widely interpreted as a threat not to cross Lawler. Then, on the 4th of April 2020, he was shot at around 11.50am outside a house in Etna Drive in Ardoin. The PSNI and Garda Shiohana believe that he had travelled to Belfast in the hours before he was shot, possibly to collect debts. As well as being the suspect in the death of Keen Mulready Woods, he was suspected of being responsible for a number of other killings. There was a 57-year-old Kieran Wiley who was shot outside his home on Lenardoon Avenue on the 17th of May 2020. Former pub doorman had been aware he was under threat before being shot dead at his home. Two men, including at least one experienced gunman, forced their way into the house and shot the 57-year-old a number of times at close range. His daughters witnessed the attack and they were said at the time to be deeply traumatised. Said he was a well-known doorman in Belfast. And on the days before his death, Mr. Wiley was said to have been increasingly concerned that there was an attempt on his life. Graffiti making allegations that he was claiming he was an MI5 tout was painted on the walls close to his home. Aware of the rumours circulating against him, police believe he may have tried to clear his name. Then on June the 27th, 2020, 28 year old Warren Crossan, son of Tommy Crossan, who we just mentioned, who had been killed six years earlier, was shot and killed in Rodney Parade. The involvement of organised crime groups in this killing has not been ruled out. The father of two was shot dead in broad daylight on St Catherine's Road on June the 27th when two gunmen chased him and fired a number of shots in the busy residential area. PSNI detectives released CCTV and images of the suspected gunman in a bid to track them down. Crossan was previously arrested and questioned about the murder of Robbie Lawler, another guy that we've mentioned, and as I said he was the son of Tommy Crossan. And then there was Danny McLean, who was shot dead close to McGrath's Club on Cliftonville Road on the 2nd of February 2021. He was sitting in his car on a driveway on Cliftonville Road when he was targeted at close range by a lone gunman. His murder was linked to a fallout amongst dissident Republicans that also claimed the life of Kieran Wiley, who was shot in his West Belfast home. 
Then there's a 31-year-old Mark Hall. He was shot and killed at his family home on Rodney Drive on 18th of December 2021. CCTV footage released by the PSNI showed two gunmen arriving in the area. As I said, the father of one was brutally gunned down as he sat in the front room of his mum's house in Belfast. Hall was shot seven times in a well-planned and brutal hit. He had no hope of surviving. He was good pals with Warren Crossan, who we just mentioned above. So Sean Fox has become the latest victim when he was gunned down at the Donegal Celtic Sports Club. And in a statement, Detective Chief Inspector Miller said about the shooting that this was a calculated, planned and ruthless execution. It was carried out in broad daylight and in the presence of others. He said the gunman left on foot along the Suffolk Road in the direction of Guido Gardens. He said on Sunday afternoon, October the 9th, our officers revisited the scene of the murder of Sean Fox, which has left a whole community in shock. So speaking after Sean Fox's murder, P. Paul Maskey said, This shooting on Sunday in the DC, in my view, was totally crazy. Sean Fox is now dead after men burst into this busy bar and didn't care what trauma they caused for others in the bar. One shooting is one too many, but the fact that there's been 16 in North and West Belfast is worrying. This causes a lot of worry within the community and the vast majority within our community do not want to see these shootings take place, no matter the cause. Ship boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.